I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hi, everyone. It's uh, Oops the Podcast again. I'm Francis Ellis, joined by my intrepid co-host, <laughs> co-star, Julio Gallarati. <laughs> How you doing, dude? You know, we've been Good on a lot you. of phone calls together lately. I know. I've been hitting you hard, dude. I well, just, no, I no. Feel bad about no, it. I don't mean just the two of us. I mean that the two of us have had phone calls with other people where we were both on. And whenever someone calls you Julio, it takes a pound of flesh out of my <laughs> soul. It's pretty wild. It right? bothers me on a, a sort of macro, uh, I don't even know, a DNA level. Yeah, dude, it's a pretty crazy thing. It's pretty crazy. I don't, I don't, I, I wish I could understand it more. Do you understand it? I just, the only thing that, I have the no only explanation is that Julio is such a common name, such a more common name than Julio. Here, yeah. Yes. You know, like Europeans have no issue with it because they're just like used to Italian people. Right. Like right. real Italian people. And there's so many vowels. I mean, we see I, you, and that just causes people's brains to short circuit. But dude, when I see P-I-U, I think pew, pew. Like I would never be like, Pio. Yeah, but... but <laughs> Pooey. <n> nope. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I think the comp there would be few. But few, isn't that P-H-E-W? Yeah, I'm saying your G is soft. What about Mew Mew? Ju Again, you're, you're asking too much Julio. of people because nobody's thinking, okay... Here's a name I know I'm going to struggle with. I'm going to, how do I, what have I seen that looks like this? Mew, mew, pew, pew. Surely it must be Julio. Right. But it's just the arrangement of it. But dude, it, it happens to me all the time. Yesterday I got a coffee. I, I always say Julio with a G. I've started to at least say Julio with a G. So that usually results in Gulio, <laughs> but, but it's fine. But dude, like when I'm at Starbucks or something, I know it's me. I know it's mine because they look at it and they go and they make this perplexed face. Uh -huh. And I immediately approach the calendar. I'm like, Jul Julio. And they're like, Ugh. and they hand it to me. <laughs> dude, I don't know. Oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> but oh, do no. I? I usually don't correct people. No, you, you're better about it. But when I hear it, I get. I get personally offended. I don't I know don't, why. I don't, it's hard. It's a hard thing. So this is what sometimes can end up happening. If I don't nip it in the bud, then like people will call me Julio for like 10 years and I just let them do it. Like Emma Willman calls me Julio still. And I'm Are just, you serious? I'm just well, Julio to her. She has dyslexia. She does? She's very open about it. She jokes about it on oh, right, stage. Right. No, I, sorry, I didn't know that. And I have, no, I have no problem with it. I just, you know, it's not like she isn't polite or nice to me and I never corrected her. How would she know? Like maybe when somebody else says my name, but then may she thinks maybe they're saying it wrong and she's trying to say it right. Like I understand the thought process. I'm not mad at anybody about it. You know, it's just like, yes, I yes. love Emma. Like it says, I'm not, this is like, it's just a thing, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And when we were on that call yesterday and he was like, Julio, am I saying it right? And then I was like, actually, it's Julio. I was like, literally, no worries. Every single person on earth does it. I thought that that went really nicely. That was nice. But that if, was nice. <laughs> but if he didn't bring it up, I mean, we may never have, have been able to figure out. I mean, maybe it in might person, have been stuck. Yeah. In person, I would have said something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, either way, <laughs> I've had quite a week. <laughs> We're recording on? this on a Friday. I have gone out to dinner four nights in a row. <laughs> wow. For, for what? So the first night I went out to, it was one of those things where I sort of agreed to a lot of dinners without realizing that I had, that they were just, that <laughs> it was, consecutive. yeah, I didn't take into account <laughs> that I was filling the week with dinners. Now, granted, I didn't pay for two of them. That's nice. So four dinners for the price of two is, I'll take that. It's Although solid. that's not really the math because I did take Sierra on a date one night. And of course, you know, that's one dinner for the price of two for me okay so you're you're a positive one dinner in this scenario let's you've think. gotten back one dinner you've now paid for three dinners out of yes four. yes and Net. even then the math isn't quite right because on monday 
we went out to a dinner with my buddy. My buddy is in town from L.A. Very, very dear friend of mine. Listens to the podcast. Who is Shout out know him? John. John. <laughs> John with no H. So I suspect oh. the same people who have a hard time with Julia would be like, what is this? Han? Is Jan. This, am I spelling this right? Saying this right? Is it? Is it Han? Han. Uh, so he was in town and we love him. And so he said, Can, would anyone be willing to have dinner? And we said, yes. So four of us went out to dinner. And then we played a sort of inside out credit card roulette. Oh, fun. So. What does that mean, though, inside out? Well. Do you, all right. Do we know about credit card roulette, everybody? Should we backtrack? For why, don't you la- why don't you lay it down for Okay, him? credit card roulette. What a fun, exciting game. Especially when with four people, I feel like that's the perfect time. When it's like a 12-person dinner, that's some fucked up shit. Because it essentially means you put all the cards in a pile, and I don't know exactly how you would you shuffle You get the cards. waiter. You get the waiter. The waiter will choose one. You, get, you hand all the cards to the waiter and tell him to put them behind his back. He starts moving them around. So this, the problem that I, ha- that I have with that is like, I think you should do a little pre-shuffle and then just hand them because the waiter might just pick the top one. Mm. What, whatever. That doesn't matter. So essentially, they just pick one card, and that card pays for the entire meal. That's credit card roulette. Mm. Well, the way I like to play credit card roulette is you do process of elimination so that everyone who's been- Oh, my God. Who's had their- You, you whittle oh it down. Oh, my God. That's so And you can fun. celebrate when oh you're God, safe. Oh, my God. That's amazing. And that's when it gets really <laughs> oh intense. Oh, my God. You got you to gotta add a you that's flair, for great. The, flair for the theater there, Francis Julia. still with the meal, the high stakes meal games. Yeah, but I, I hate- playing credit card roulette i think the one or two times that i've done it that way i've lost both times really yeah now there's a <laughs> there's this is our inside out that's credit really card good. roulette where it is this wait that's not inside out what you just described that's normal credit card oh, roulette. that's fine the way we like to do it is that the waiter uh same thing picks cards picks, picks credit cards and everyone whose card he picks has to pay until there's one card left and only one person doesn't have to pay. Which means that, you know, the people who are paying are paying like 20% uh, more than uh, they would. So or 30% one person more. doesn't pay? One person gets a free meal. You're not getting totally screwed mm. if you have to pay because you're just sharing among the group one other person's dinner share. Right. And uh, you're not angry because you're, you know, doing the whole thing. So there's one winner instead of one loser. Yeah. And it's a really nice nice way. That's nice. It's a really nice way. And you're always happy for the person who won. That's nice. So we do it that way. That's that's a little bit less risky. Yeah. And so, of course, you know, I I was legitimately the first card he pulled. First person to make to be paying. Oh, who's this? Oh, two. Yeah, to be paying. Francis Ellis, American Express Platinum Card. Uh, Speaking of which, boy, am I enjoying the perks of that. And our my bonus is opened up again. So if anyone out there is looking to get the Amex Platinum, because the new year started. Wow. And that would mean you too. No, because I got mine this year. Oh, you bad boy. I'm a bad bad boy. So if you if you're <laughs> thinking of getting the American Express Platinum card which you highly should, uh DM me and I'll give you my referral code and I can uh get some points. Do may I add something to this real quick? Yeah. Not surprised you got pulled first. The, in this situation is when you pull your like shitty visa out. Maybe because, but and, there was another Amex Platinum in the pile. But, but this is why the like, and when I say shitty visa, I mean literally the shitty visa. Like, if you have a metal visa that doesn't apply, I have one visa for like international travel that is plastic and like really light. You're less likely for them to pull that one. You think? Absolutely. You think if you're the waiter Absolutely. and you're holding cards behind your back, you're pulling you, the metal one out. You're not hundred percent, dude. I worried about that. I thought, oh, that that's a flashy card. He's gonna. It's just dense, dude. Mm-hmm. You don't need that dense card in the mix. Too smooth. You, you need the feather in the deck. His, his little fingers felt it and said, Ooh, Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I want to see what that's about. Big boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I lost immediately, of course, <laughs> which meant that I paid for 1.33 dinners on Monday. Okay. On Tuesday, I was treated to dinner. Wednesday... I went to dinner with Sierra to a new restaurant that was unbelievable. Really? Siciamo, new Italian it? place in Hudson Yards. Ah. Really, really good. Awesome. 
Good to know. Very, very open. I spoke with the head chef, a woman. I don't know why I said that she was a woman, uh, but she was. And we had a very nice conversation. And she was sort of uh, up, up near the kitchen, but it was an open kitchen. Mm -hmm. And she was speaking with somebody. And so I sort of just leaned in and said, if I may. That's how I, <laughs> that's how I started the conversation. She goes, of course you may. Now, when you start with, if I may, to a chef, they don't know if you're coming with criticism oh, yeah. or praise. Right. They might think, listen, like we know that you're doing something here, but like not offering adjustments on the yeah. spaghetti, blah, blah, blah. If I'm coming, imagine coming to a chef <laughs> with notes. Do people do it? I think that's worse than coming to a comedian with notes. People do it. Um, I, I'm like back and forth about it. I, but I think that like if I'm on your turf and you're cooking for me and I've agreed to like eat it, then I don't. I'm happy to eat it the way you've intended. Yeah, it's one of those things where she would have to know that you were an established, very good chef yourself in order to take any feedback from you right. with to heart. Right. Because if you're just some idiot eater, you know, what the hell mm. are you doing? But I had this nice conversation with her. And, uh, you know, when you speak with the chef, it, it adds to the experience. I hate <laughs> to say that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. I think there's something where you you think like, oh, I, I got it's it's like uh, when you used to fly as a kid, and if you were young, and occasionally they'd bring you into the cockpit to meet the captains and give yeah. you the wings, the pin on your shirt. It's it, it definitely it was it would be like drinking Poland Spring out of the literal Poland Spring. Sure, we could. <laughs> I think we could come up with a lot of of um, analogies for this, um, but you get the idea. Yeah, you get the idea. So we had a lovely dinner, really, really nice. And then, um, again, went out to dinner last night uh, with this you know, new company that, that I'm doing some work with, and same was on Tuesday, and just awesome. Uh, but but I'll, I'll tell you, man, you know me. You, know, you, go, you go out to dinner four nights in a row. <laughs> you, you, you feel like you're on vacation or something. Right. Like, what am I doing here? Like... Uh, I'm sick of ordering. I'm sick of eating appetizers and then entrees. I, I hate to sound spoiled, but I, you know, give me a plate of home cooked food and a and a nice after dinner TV show to watch, and I'm happier. Mm. I mean, dude, whatever. It's good. You're out in the mix. You're doing stuff. You're. It's like meetings. That you, and also you're not paying. And it sounded like you had a really well balanced week of going out to eat. It wasn't just the same meal every time. No, it was it very, was very dynamic. Yeah, 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 dude. The enjoy. first night we went, uh, the second night we went out was Barbudo, which was awesome. Mm. But dude, the um, it was interesting B going to dinner, knowing that it was going to be paid for. I don't know that there's an experience as enjoyable as that. <laughs> and and you can't help but think. I'm like, I look at I look at Sierra, and she's like, we should do this more often. And I'm like, of course, of course, you would think that. <laughs> Yeah. You know, if I were getting my dinners paid for every time we went out, like, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> load it up. I'll go out six nights a week. I don't give a, you know what I mean? Dude, I agree. I, um, one it's of my, awesome. one of my buddies owns a hotel and in the hotel, they have like a fine dining restaurant and he'll hit me up sometimes and be like, do you want to go to dinner Tuesday? And I'll be like, oh, I don't know. And then he's like, and he'll like say his restaurant and then I'm like, oh yeah, dude, tell me. <laughs> I like go from saying no and he knows that if he includes that detail that I'm like more than 50% more likely to accept the invitation. I love it. Food on you and your fam? Absolutely. Well, Julia and I are cracking a couple Lord Farclaws here. Oh yeah. It's one of those days. <sighs> it's about to be beautiful out. Cheers, it's beautiful. Bro. Good weather. I, I already got my workout in. I fed the pythons, visited the yeah. uh, Serpentarium. Oh, we should address that. We need to that. mention that. If it yeah. sounds slightly different, we are experimenting uh, with recording upstairs because we have a surprise guest on the next episode, mm -hmm. and it sort of required a little bit of a shuffling around of the setup, not to mention we are just mixing things up. And Francis, I like how the bookshelf is really conducive with our colorful background theme. People always give me shit about how I've color-coded my books, and to them I say, fuck you. They're like, what are you, a psycho? It's yeah. a real low-hanging fruit job, to be honest. Yeah, it's stupid. It's unsophisticated. It's really stupid. I bet those people don't even have books. Yeah. <laughs> books. You know what I mean? It's not, as if, it's not as if they have a bookshelf that's jumbled. Dude, so that is very true. They just don't have books at all. They do not have books at all. Yeah. And they need to remember that books, like... 
The thing that we're missing here is like, not only have you probably read all of these, have you read all of these? I probably read 80% Most of them. them. Yeah. Books really are a nice decoration. Sure are. As well. You know sure what I mean? If you, can, if you can maintain the like needing to keep them de-dusted, undusty. Oh, I don't, I, I don't dust these books. No, I know. They, but the cleaning lady probably does, uh, right? Maybe she might. I, I, I feel like I'm lucky in that my books don't, uh, they don't, they don't collect a lot of dust. It's a good collection. Here's a question that I have. Have you omitted any books from here for optics? Were you like, all these books need to accurately represent me, mm. therefore I cannot include XYZ It's a good Z question. Book. Yeah, there's no Harry Potter up there. Um, <laughs> the Catcher in the Rye is not up no, there. I, it, it actually might be. Um, <laughs> I, I can't say that I have. I can't say that I've omitted any books. I don't, I'm not uh, self-conscious about the stuff I've read. It's very, it's all over the place. Uh -huh. You know, there's well a huge variety of nonsense. Plus, Sierra brought a bunch of her business books and she reads you know that kind of stuff and tough conversations in the workplace yeah what, whatever <laughs> like you know the, the lean startup and oh, some nice, of those nice. like how to build whatever you know the books that i wouldn't even read if like i was on i was i don't even know i don't know what it would take for me to read a book like that yeah just theory i know dense business theory theory is dangerous man I have people in my life who I've been watching apply theory to their day in and day out, and it's just not working. And they, <laughs> <laughs> and it's really hard to watch because I know that like that this is built into the theory. You might you might get resistance at first, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean. Like there's things built into it that are just not clicking. And I advise anybody listening to before you apply some sort of idea to your life think about the practical usage of it i i agree i think that you know it, it can help some people but if you're constantly trying to fit some prescribed framework around your life and then i don't know assume that all these decisions you're making or the steps that you're taking somehow align with paths or ways forward that have been you know written out for you vaguely in some book that author has no idea who the fuck you are he doesn't yeah. know what you're facing everyone's lives have their own blueprint in my opinion and uh certainly leave yourself open to spontaneity and uh critical un thinking yeah unless unless you're just incapable of of keeping your life together mm -hmm. like if you're somebody who's you just need a full-on overhaul. Had major whatever addiction problems, or like can't get off the couch to do your work, can't get a job. Then maybe yeah, these these books will help you get started. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. If you don't have more about no, that, that's it. So I'm going to show you a, fo a photo, and I'm going to ask you if you were to go buy this, buy this thing I'm about to show you, and you were to tell someone, say, let's call it Sierra. You were to tell Sierra, I'm going to go buy this. What would you say? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go buy some salmon. That's how you, that's how you'd say, right? Okay. Here, I'm going to show it to the, to the camera. I, that is, by the way, not at all what I was expecting that picture <laughs> to be. I thought it was going to be a chair or, I mean, I've never said to anyone, I'm going to go buy some salmon. I've never said those words out loud. <laughs> Just I, salmon. That's it. Okay. So, so that was really helpful. Some salmon, right? That's Did you what I would say go too. to buy some salmon? No, but Hillary enjoys ta talking about the idea of perhaps acquiring some salmon, but she doesn't say it like that. <laughs> she doesn't say it like that. Why does she talk about I don't know. acquiring salmon? <laughs> Why would she do that? She's, she's talking about like she's planning <laughs> meals for the week, right? And she is intending... <laughs> <laughs> for salmon to be one of those meals but she doesn't say it like that dude she'll when say was the last time we acquired salmon dude. i'm not seeing any salmon we need to go we need to go acquire some dude so some salmon but what she says she says a piece of salmon huh i'm gonna go i think we should get I a, see. So a this piece is the issue a piece of salmon i'm like i've never heard that and like it's just you know tomato tomato situation but like is that a thing? What are you? What are you saying? I'm like, why do you say a piece of salmon? Yeah, but what are you? How would you say? I want some salmon. Some salmon. Get some fish. By the way, get salmon. Salmon's fine. I would if you if you want to go into the individualized pieces, I would say a fillet. 
Of and, uh, okay, interesting. And I do understand that a piece of salmon, you're not eating the entire salmon. A salmon is a very big fish. Like, we're not eating the whole... I understand. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it just is, like, weird. And I'm like, is that a thing that people say? It must be. A piece of salmon? A piece of fish? This is one of those things where I bet you that if, if Hillary were to hear this conversation, she would have, you know, lots of good defensive points for her case. She would probably just come back with something stupid that I say. Like, and it, because whatever I say is actually stupid and what she says is not. Hers mm -hmm. happens to just be a style choice. Where I'll say close the light which she will always tell me is wrong can you close the lights she's like it's turn off the lights and i'm like okay fine yeah what is close the it's, lights? all right i know fine i'm wrong on that one whatever but this is this like this is that's what would happen did if we, you live in a place where where your lights had some sort of like uh shutter <laughs> were your lights on a shutter system <laughs> i'm pulling dude no okay but this is what would, this is how this conversation would go close the light this is how the combo would go if hillary were involved she would immediately come up with like four wrong things that i regularly say uh, uh, -huh. uh and then she would also cite how i say sayings wrong and she would just like because she's defensive about the piece of salmon situation. Uh -huh, uh -huh, that's uh -huh. what would end up happening. She fights fire with fire. She fights fire with fire. I see. Not not even that's maybe not even necessarily true in this situation. That's what would happen. Though. Why do you say close the light? I don't know. I just do. I've heard cut the lights off. Oh, interesting. I've heard that. Not in a production. Cut the light. Cut the, cut lights. the lights off. Yeah. Um, and but that that's that's. Nate Bargatze says that, and then I think he has a bit about saying oh. it, where people think it's sort of uh, trashy or something. <laughs> Cut um, the but it's an interesting one. And then it, yeah, for I'm with it's to me, it's turn the lights off. Yeah, that certainly makes sense. Hit the switch. I don't, I don't know. Turn interesting. The off. What's happening with you, dude? So I mean, I have things to share, but I can't help but notice the. Proper measuring tape sitting on the table. Oh yeah, we should do. I'd love um, to do some pipe measuring. All right, let's dude. do some pythons. Let's, okay, Ryan. Um, unfortunately, has the I don't have the black one, which we use. But this one. This is this is a good suffice. one. So people have been telling us we we were noticing that there may have been some inconsistencies with our initial measuring, and it was because we were using different devices, and we've been told that this sort of soft measuring tape should do the trick. Let me make sure that we have inches and not centimeters. I'm trying to figure out. I, so I did not avoid, flex. I'm not allowed to flex. Okay. So as to avoid people combusting when I say that Francis has 37 by my side? inch pythons. Uh, yeah, I guess. By, by my side. side? This okay. also was the Here same one that you used the last time that we recorded. Oh, so we do have a we have a control with this. Yeah. Um, we do. Okay, here we go. Python measuring time. Proper, is this around the proper area? Make sure you get it on the, the yeah. widest part of the okay. python. Okay. So five weeks ago. On Take February the belly 10. of the python. You no were flexing. 13.5. No flexing. Ow. <laughs> what is it? So five weeks ago, you were 13.5. What are we at? We're at uh, 14 and three quarters. Oh. 14 and three quarters. Holy shit, dude. That's a whole dinner on a that's credit some, card. That's some Sammy Sosa growth. Yeah, dude. that's a little piece of salmon right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's at least a piece of salmon in those pythons. That is a real piece of salmon, that's brother. That's one and a quarter inch that I've added. In a very short the period of time. The girth groweth. Mm -hmm. What is your weight difference? A lot. You've put on? I've put on about seven pounds. Since, since January I, 1? Since I started the creatine. I don't know when I started the creatine. Ryan, do you have any dates? I don't have the first we have a post. I posted about it. Let's uh, see I'll if we can get some On my tick tickety. Tickety, tickety. Tickety, tockety. Um, no sorry, Francis, love to see it. Up a lot. You know, listen, Pipe here's the growth. thing. Um. I'm not sure that I love my body. What do you mean? Uh, I'm Just getting, getting pretty huge. bulky. You're getting juicy. <laughs> we're <dude>. getting we're <laughs> getting towards the territory that I was fearful of. I always wonder about this. Like I've never really, I've never gotten to the place where I'm like, my body is where I had intended it to be when I set out on whatever goal I'm doing. And that's actually, there have been times where I actually had reached it, but just didn't realize it. I like to think now that if I were to ever be able to get there, whatever. But I've always wondered what it must be like to be able to achieve that and then be like, okay, well I've achieved that. Now I'm going to completely do something else and then achieve that too. Yeah, but this it isn't to be my, satisfying. this isn't my goal, but getting huge is not your goal right now. No, my goal was to, to bulk and then cut. So you're still in the bulking phase. 
I don't even know where I am. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just sort of seeing where this goes. Just in swollen limbo. And I'm I'm taking, you know. What's up, miss? Yeah. All I'm doing is taking that? five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Taking five what? Ti- five uh, grams or milligrams of creatine a day. That's it. I'm not taking protein. I'm not eating enough. I know that. But, dude, you're putting on serious size still. So. I think a lot of that is the creatine. Oh, uh, got it. But I'm also lifting four days a week. Damn. Hard. Damn. And then, you know, adding in some cardio too. So I'm exercising religiously and, you know, I'm not, I don't feel great. I can't say that I feel great. My muscles are sore. Mm. Isn't it a good sore though? My shoulders are a little past the good range. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of revving the engine into the red zone. Got it. A little, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing my right shoulders sort of begging with me to like, yo, dude, we don't need to do this. Take it easy, buddy. You know, what's the <laughs> point? And uh, I don't really have a great reason for, for it. You know what bothers me? I'm doing these um, ring dips. And today I did them what's wearing that? a weight vest. It's when you do dips on like the gymnastics rings. Oh, shit. So they're not stable. They have those in your gym? Some guy brought all kinds of Sick. very... <laughs> kind of advanced uh, exercise equipment and just leaves it in the gym i don't know that it's for anyone else dude, but i use sick. it and he he's he left the weight vest too dude so you're just doing like cirque du soleil training down there dude i do i was <laughs> doing crazy. i was doing ring dips with the oh weight vest God. on today and i mean first of all you put that weight vest on you feel like bane dude totally you feel cool it's very hard ah, not to just rest your hands man. At the top of it, <laughs> like football players on the sideline yeah, yeah, waiting to go in. It's really it's cool. It's a tough luck, dude. Um, that's sick. I like that weight vest. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then the ring dips. I, you know, but that's what hurts my shoulder. Mm. So I, I'm like, what am I? I don't you know. I've got to figure something else out. Well, dude, it's great. I'm glad this, to see you making progress. Sierra's not thrilled. What do you mean? She doesn't like this new man? She's just like, okay. What do you mean? You've done it. You know, it's, uh, do you really need to get much bigger? I'm getting to a, I'm going to get, if I continue on this path, I think, I don't know, I don't know if I'll plateau, but I'll, if I, unless I, if I don't plateau, then I'm going to get to a point where I look ridiculous, Mm. where I'm just like a big hunk of beef, (laughs) just a massive, (laughs) massive man. People be like, is he training to for the nfl like what yeah, is yeah, why are yeah. you putting on so are you, much weight are you playing tarzan yeah and i don't really have a good answer it's dude, like you don't need shit. to be massive to be a comedian that's really funny um dude i love it i love it Sometimes but you just gotta fucking go for it whatever this is the last time in my opinion the the one thing that i will that will stop me definitely is if uh you know if if all of a sudden I go out to play golf and I can't even get the golf club around my back because all my muscles are in the way. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, if it if it really affects the things I enjoy, right. Then I'll be like, all right, it's time, be time to, to call it quits. You know, friggin' tone it down. No pun intended. It's gonna be interesting watching the great shrink. <laughs> what's what's oh oh you're a great shrink? When I start to really shrink. Um that'll be interesting. Yeah. You'll probably just get ripped. Well, or saggy. Really? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tone. I'm gonna you know cut. They call it, and I don't know how to do that. Really? <laughs> I haven't researched that. If it's honestly, it seems like if you were to just like ignore your impulse to f- to force yourself to eat when you didn't feel like it, and just lived your natural life, it would just not. It would happen. But I'm not eating that much. I've I, I've missed a lot of meals. So you could just take stop taking creatine, probably. If I stop taking creatine, it'll it'll happen. But I also think that there's a phase where, you know, I could I could try to. I think it's like you start doing more cardio, and then you lift weights that are lower weight but at higher reps, mm. and you really and then and you really kind of pull your skin tight against. I don't I don't know. Think. Hugh Jackman in the the Wolverine, mm-hmm. which was the one um, in Japan, where he was the most cut of all the roles he played. Wolverine, in. that's what I want to look like. I love it, dude. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, 
January 20th. Well, it's been almost two months then. We started on January 20th. January 20th is the official All right. beginning of this. Seven Dude, pounds, two months. That's pretty good. Okay, so I have a question for you. So this girl, Maggie, who you speaking of exercise, she used to manage uh, New York Comedy Club. She now manages a Pilates studio. And she was like, feel free to come by whenever and you can take class and like you can literally come whenever you want. So it's interesting. When somebody says that to you, you know that there's the ability to uh, take advantage of that scenario if you wanted to or to annoy them. And you don't want to do either of those things. Mm -hmm. So I've redeemed two of these offers in probably a month and a half span. Mm -hmm. um, and not to mention, you know, it comes with risks. Like I was on my way to class one day and she texted me. I was like, hey, it's sold out. Sorry, like come tomorrow or whatever. So I've gone twice. First time I went, whatever, it was nice. The second time I go and then I'm like, can I like bring coffees for all you guys? Uh, so, and she's like, no, 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 we already had them. I was like, okay, well, like that I was like, trying to do something nice. And then she sort of was like, no, 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 you know. And then I was thinking I would invite her for lunch, but she had mentioned that she hadn't slept much and that she wanted to go take a nap and she actually didn't have to come back for the afternoon because after the late class, there's like a four hour break in between mm. and then they go back for the afternoon classes. But she wasn't doing that particular, this particular day. I'm like, okay. But she's like, but seriously, still come whenever you want. Mm. And I've really enjoyed the classes and they're really great. And it's a nice like change up, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, and also my hips been bothering me. So it's like a nice thing to like strengthen the hips and whatever. So my question to you is what's the appropriate way to proceed without sort of being annoying or wearing out my welcome, but still being able to maximize the advantages of this hookup. That's great. And you, and you gave us so many good details, <laughs> which were all important. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. Um, look, I, I think that someone who makes that offer if hopefully, uh, if it if it's no longer an offer that she wants you to accept, she'll just stop offering it. So, but what? But the offer has been made in perpetuity already. So, therefore, how does she st stop that? She would have to say something like, "Oh, you know, the classes have been pretty busy. They're like booked out. They're like sold out the next couple of weeks." Yeah, or or she could just blame it on someone else. She could oh, say, "My boss true. has told me that oh, I can't that's give out right. classes anymore." Right, 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 right. And you wouldn't be bothered. No, no. Be and if you fine. really wanted to, you know, you'd start paying for them. I, um, I, listen. I don't make uh, offers to people uh, hoping that they will say no, but that I'll get credit for having made the offer, really. I, I've just been in way too many situations where when the time comes to redeem the offer, suddenly it, the conversation has just completely shifted tone. And it's like, why do I now feel uncomfortable when you're the one who offered something to me? You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel you. I that, think you're just in your own head. No, I'm not. This. I'm not. I'm not. Like, you think the tone has shifted? Not with her. In general, I've been in situations with people. Yes. And whether, albeit friends that maybe are a little moody or a little, oh, this guy's in a really good mood when he's not in this good of a mood, this offer will no longer stand. Or you sort of learn to take the, the temperature of the offer, being like, oh, I know he doesn't mean it. You know what I mean? You sort of learn to know which offer is a real offer, if that makes sense. So if you offer, you know, I will still try to read between the lines a little bit. You're right. But You're like, right. Right. but... You know, like you said, if you're making me a genuine offer, I will, I will typically, hopefully, be able to tell. Right. I, I hope. If let's say that, let's say that I had, I don't know, I guess like a, a ski house in Telluride. Okay. Or yeah, Telluride. Um, let's just say I had one. Yeah. And I knew that you and Hill Dog were going to Telluride. Uh huh. And I was like, dude, stay at our house. We're not gonna be there. It's yours. Please, we want you to stay, right? Mm -hmm. You would know that was an offer that I would want you to take take you take up on, take us up on, right? Pro yeah, probably. You have doubts about that offer? No, but like it's just it's a high stakes offer. I can that's fuck upable in many ways. So it's yeah, like but do if I want to add that if you go in element? there and you spill chocolate milk all over the couch, <laughs> Pay for it. That's it. Right, right, right. right. No, no. I, and of course, easily right any wrongs that are done, which there will be none. And then if, you know, pay for the cleaning lady without you having to ask and like leave something nice or send you something. And then, yeah, leave a little like a, a Trader Joe's uh, assortment basket. Only if I know something like that. If I know nice. you're on the way soon. Otherwise, I'll send you something here if I know that you're not going to be making it out to yeah. the Colorado house. Bingo. Bingo. Now, now. I'll handle it. If, if <laughs> I made the offer this way. Oh, you guys are going to Telluride? Yeah, I mean, um, 
you know, I think I think we have a couple people <laughs> staying at the house that weekend, but there is there is an open bedroom. Like I can just sort of let me just get their temperature, but I, I I'm pretty sure you could probably use it. Right, right. That's right. That's not a real offer. That's me saying don't make my life more difficult. Right. But then, but 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 the problem with that now is I never asked you for that. If I bring it up, if I'm like, oh, you know. <laughs> Don't you have a house in town? Yeah. That's when you can do that. You wouldn't just unsolicitedly do that because then it's like suddenly I'm just getting <laughs> shit on for no reason. <laughs> Listen, you freeloading piece of shit. I know what you're thinking. But dude, <laughs> this this comes back to the conversation we had about overstepping. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. And you should know based on your relationship to the person. Uh I, that's a big part of it. Th- simply put, there's no ask from you that to me would be overstepping because I know you well enough to have no problem saying no to you. Right, right, right. You're not putting me in an awkward position. Totally, dude, absolutely. It gets more awkward when you don't know the person that well. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Because then it becomes harder to read their in-between-the-lines type body language, tone, right. et cetera. So, but here's an example. You're hanging out with some big comedians and maybe it's like a big comedian, right? And they sort of like, are like, hey, you should, you should come do so-and-so with me. And you're like, okay. And then you never talk about it again. Yeah. And then you're like, do I like follow up about this? Like right. all of a sudden now you're in this like mind fuck pickle. Yeah. And you're like, maybe they just forgot. <laughs> like it's just, it just sucks. Now all of a sudden you like are thinking, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't, but, but dude, hundred percent, like if it was us, I don't think that there would be any issue, but you're right. When it's somebody you don't know that well is when you want to kind of, I do. And I, and there, there's been a time in my life where I wasn't as good about this kind of stuff. So I still always, am, and I didn't realize it. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to just be aware, you know? Well, here's something funny for you. So uh, I was texting a, 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 a girlfriend of mine uh, who I was going to see later that night. And I texted her, you know, a question or something. And she responded to the question. And then accidentally, she was doing voice texts. Mm. And the next text she sent to me said something like, I've got room for one more in the shower. Y- you'll just have to like pay for it or something. Winky face. It was okay. like, I think it was kind boyfriend. of a, a flirtatious sexual text. She immediately caught it to her boyfriend. I don't even know. Yeah. Whoever. Someone, some guy. And she immediately caught some it. It was like, guy. Oh my God, I'm sending voice texts. I can't believe I sent that to you. You know, so sorry, whatever. And I was like, ha I like wrote ha 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 in like all caps. Cause it was, it was very funny. Um, and then I sent, no problem, it sounded nice or like welcoming or something. <laughs> I sent that and then I was like, fuck. <laughs> Did she think that I was like <laughs> sexting her back? Like I was trying to let her off the hook right. and just be like, ha ha ha, no problem. It sounded like you were being nice or something, right. but I wrote it sounded nice. And it's like then the shower sounds like so. Uh, I didn't know. I felt like I had done something <laughs> wrong. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. And I, feel I don't you. know what I'm supposed to do to to help unembarrass her. Yeah. Without implicating myself. I know. So, dude, this is the problem. That situation. She has. A, she's embarrassed herself, and like that's her fault. Like you didn't do anything. So there's no point to also embarrass yourself back. You got to just do less in that situation. You say ha ha ha, all good. Instead of, You're oh right. man, You're sounds right. wet in there. Less is more. <laughs> yeah. I love a good shower. Big shower guy, you know? Like, uh, no, I'm, I, you're right. Less is totally more. It's totally fine though, dude. She knows better. Yes. She doesn't think that. Yes. And she knows you well enough to know the tone of what you're saying. Correct. Correct. Because yeah. it's very, through the Francis filter, like you saying that aloud, like makes sense in a non-flirtatious way. You just like didn't know what to say. Yeah. You know, yeah. Which is fine. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Though. I think it was okay, but I remember I instantly I was like, that, that. <laughs> what have I done? Mm-hmm. I don't love that I said that. <laughs> oh, I got another funny thing for you. Let's hear it. Dude, I was just working out mm-hmm. 
there was one other woman in the gym and she was on the peloton tread okay which i have run on before Mm -hmm. and i'm i come in she's deep into her workout you know yeah like huffing and puffing in there in it love it and i turn on my bluetooth headphones (laughs) and it automatically (laughs) takes the peloton tread off of her and oh, kicks it wow. to me and she stops and she goes hey but now i'm like listening to this workout and i'm like what fucking song is this did she immediately knew what had happened oh yeah and she was like hey and she had to like jump off the tread and be like ah because i've got my headphones in oh my god and it's being like keep running up that hill and i'm like is this the new j cole and <laughs> You know, and uh, is this like a prelude to the song? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like it could easily be. I know, I know. Yeah, it's fucking um, funny. And and uh, and she was like, "Excuse me, I think it, I think it took your headphones." And I was like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." And I felt really bad because, you know, it sucks to be taken out of your workout uh when you're when you're in the middle of it totally, like that totally but it was kind of funny i don't know that was that was just something Dude, that, that happened just, that's fucking great what yeah. a really like, unlikely scenario <laughs> you know that's mm-hmm. so crazy mm-hmm. um dude so i want to kind of pull a fucking curveball right now and do a mid a mid episode email oh because okay. i think that you guys all right. are all going to really enjoy this okay. it's pretty unique all right um okay this is called to look or not to look Dear Julio and Francis, hope you're well. Emailing you here all the way from the UK. Late to the party. I'm only roughly 20 episodes into Oops. Welcome and welcome to the rest of our new listeners. Uh, nice to have you. And to our OGs, we appreciate you. Mm. Um, hence, it could be suggested I'm somewhat of a newbie. Despite this, I, I already f- I find myself in a slight Oops predicament. Mm-hmm. As I've only ever listened to audio of Oops, I had never seen what both of you physically look like. Mm. Albeit the small caricature on the Spotify cover. Listening to the somewhat personal stories about your lives, I've obviously built up a very vivid mental image of how you look. When I mentioned this uh, to a friend, he immediately pulled up Francis' Instagram and showed me. Whilst being super stoked to finally see the pythons, my mental depiction was way off from real life. Mm -hmm. My listening hasn't been tainted by this, but my imaginary Francis no longer exists, and the experience is slightly different. That same friend... (laughs) (laughs) that same friend went to show me julio's instagram page afterwards to which i immediately stopped him as it stands i currently have no idea what julio looks like (laughs) my mental image currently has him looking very much like michael pena from the 2000 film 2007 film shooter can we pull him up michael pena is great great what does he look like he's i think he's latin american i mean you know, isn't he? He was in, uh, yeah. Let's see what he looks like. He was in like Ant Man. Yeah. <laughs> this guy, dude. That's not like super far off. It's like not what I look like, but it's, I am so curious what he thought I looked like. I know. Yeah. It sounds like his image of me was shattered. <laughs> Utterly Michael upended. Pena. I feel like from an energy perspective, I really, I do sort of fit the Michael Pena. Michael Pena is cool. You know, if He's I were cool. an actor, like, I could see myself being in a lot of stuff, but like not being the main guy. But like, yeah. I don't know. It seems to fit me vibe wise, maybe. Yeah. Um, the question is, should I look at Julio? Will it be? So first of all, he's spelling it Julio in this email, mm. which is maybe part of the thing. So J- my name is Julio with a G, as you probably get. He's only listened to 20 episodes. He probably isn't going to be this far for a while. Right. Um, right. Hopefully someone will tell him that his email <laughs> was referred to. Um, so yeah. I think maybe knowing that would maybe change this a little bit for him. Um, but the question is, should I look at Julio? He's so many years away from hearing his name in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be like watching the film of your favorite book and being disappointed? No offense, obviously, but do I destroy my imaginary Italian version? Okay. My imaginary Italian version of Michael Pena for Julio, or have I built this up way too much now? Maybe I should hold off. Until I managed to get out of the States for an oops show. Let me know the play. That is great. Wow, that's funny. That is really That's so good. funny. I really like I get that. this a lot, by the way. That people are always shocked 
by how I look in real life versus what they think I am. And even if they've seen me on camera. Interesting. They don't think that I'm large. I don't know if I give off small guy vibes. Not at all. But when they meet me in person, they're always like, Jesus, you're so much bigger than I thought you were. And I'm like, where did you, th- where did you why did you think I was small? That's so weird. Maybe they mean that they just thought you weren't as big. Maybe they thought you were like three inches shorter than you actually are. I mean, to me, and granted, I obviously got to see you the first time I like heard you also. But to me, you very much embody your essence. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. For the record, I am a, a pretty large guy. You're a big I'm guy. six foot three, 217 pounds right now. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Getting up there. Tall drink of water, baby. Yeah. Tall glass of Lord Farclaw. Um, <laughs> okay, dude. So I had a very funny uh, sort of predicament the other day. Mm. And I'd be curious to hear what you guys think about this. So I got a really interesting... I told, I texted you about this. I got a te- uh, call on Friday night being like, what are you doing Sunday? And I was like, nothing really. Which, by the way, I don't like when people start something by saying that because... It depends what you're going to say, dude, is what mm, I'm doing. Yes, that's right. I may do nothing over what you're going to offer. I may prefer nothing. But I think if someone asks you the question that way with such uh, little, so little inf- intel, then you have the right to respond in the vaguest way possible. I I say, why? What's up? That's what I say. Yeah. But it also depends who's asking. You're right. Because some people are just like trying to corner you into plans. And other people are like maybe have something to offer you. So this guy actually had something to offer me. And it was interesting. So he like, he, somebody asked him, do you know any sort of like people who are into travel, blah, 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 blah. Um, cool, let's use the word influencer for lack of a better term. Um, and he goes, yeah. So he hits me up. And this is the deal. This NGO was looking for, quote, influencers um, to go on this trip to Poland to help with the refugee influx from Ukraine. Wow. And I was like, wow, that sounds like such a like noble cause. I was like, what's the deal? He's like, well, dude. So then he starts being like, you know, they'll fly you first class. So they're going to put you up in like a really nice hotel. And all you got, all you have to do is like document what is going on or whatever. And I'm kind of like, oh, that, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> Doesn't that sound kind of <laughs> fucked up a little bit? It's like, I'm going to help these refugees. And now I'm like, I'm like in, I'm like documenting the front lines. I'm like, we're here on the front lines. Yeah. And like the food and water is scarce, but fortunately it's not in my hotel. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, 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 in a way, yes, but I also think that you are, I mean, if there's anyone that, I, like you're the most reasonable person to solicit for something like this. I 100% agree. Because of what the work that you've put out is so adjacent to what I would assume they're trying to do. Dude, totally. And like, it's so tempting. Like, of course, I want to go on a free trip uh, and get treated really well and like do all this dope shit for free. However, I just kind of feel guilty in that kind of situation. Like, why? Do, I don't you know. I don't know. Whatever. Like, it just feels unnecessary to like I had to get treated so well. Your holdup is the um, the disconnect between how well I'm going to be taken care of, and then I'm just going to be pretending that I'm like out here doing all this good shit, which I am. It's amazing. It's is, amazing am that you about feel this? that way. I no, might be completely wrong, and I'm not. I'm not be, criticizing it, the people. It's who are a doing non-starter it. because you wouldn't go unless you were. You know, if someone said to you, Julio, could you come over to Poland to help the refugees? get settled and document what's going on. We're going to put you up in a tent on the front lines with, and, and you'll have to pay for your flights. You'd be like, I don't have time for that right now. Yeah. That's no, not going to happen. Uh, definitely true. And it's the, not even, a, it's not a mark against right. you. It's just, why would you do that? And here's the other detail that maybe is, it is important is that I spoke to the middleman who's a very good friend of mine and I appreciate him reaching out. Um, and he was like, he's the one who told me those details, maybe thinking that that would make me more inclined to accept when in fact it just made me feel bad. But this is the thing. It's like, okay, say you're like, Hey dude, would you want to go to fucking wherever some remote place? We'll pay for everything. It'll be, we'll treat you like a King and you just like do what you do and like shoot stuff there. Of course I would do that. You know what I mean? Right. And I, I just feel like there's some disconnect here with, if I'm doing like charity work, and I'm doing this, I, I don't know. But I guess there's an exchange there 
but it just feels like mercenary like mm. well i don't know i mean i think you would need more details no that's yes and apparently the the offer is coming back up he's like there's gonna be another one so i guess i'll have time to think about it. i don't think i'm gonna have time hey you know what's i got something you know what's really good what uh the hulu doc with uh about elizabeth holmes not a doc it's a doc it's a is it the hbo one is it a different one no it's on hulu okay i i watched the original one this is not the doc okay excuse me oh, it's, it's a, a dramatic got it, uh, got it, got it, got it. whatever limited series you know yeah, yeah. very very good she's played by amanda C. Seyf- seyfried ah that makes sense yeah and she's excellent she dude she is a triple threat she what can are sing like a fucking bird oh my god she was in mean girls and she played that you know sort of brain dead girl that. i always forget that and and now has gone on to be this like nuanced character actor dude in lemis she blew me she's away she's amazing she's Le a Miz. fucking yeah. amazing mm-hmm. also anne hathaway she blew you away she was she was slept on when she's doing that dream the dream yeah and she's, got her, she's got her hair shorn dude she kills it that shit makes me cry when i watch it really yeah huh. so i want to talk about movies now this is interesting you bring this up I've been watching, what I always try to do during the award season is I will try to watch all the Best Picture nominees and then I try to watch Best Foreign Film and Best Documentary Feature. The winners of those. No, the, all the all nominees. All of the nominees for Best Foreign Film? Yeah. That is so much homework, Julia. So I'll tell you what, usually it really, it, they're, they're really, really strong. I've got, last year they were very weak. I don't know if it had something to do with COVID. Quo, Quo Vitus Ida was amazing and it didn't win somehow, which was, was blew me away. The others were terrible in my opinion, whatever, um, not to be overly critical. But so this year I find um, for best picture, the nominees, it's the weakest field of Academy Award best picture nominees that I've ever seen. I don't even know who they are. So I know that we both liked Coda. I loved Coda. Loved Coda. I thought it was unbelievable. Yeah. Like so good. But I have not yet seen Licorice Pizza. I've heard that that's good. Yeah. I have not seen Drive My Car. So that's the Japanese one. Yeah. So that's when we almost thought to watch and we watched the trailer and we were like, oh, no, we're, n- we're not up for this tonight. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Subtitles and moody, long, thoughtful shots of someone's face looking into a window. Yeah, yeah I, feel, I do. I feel you. So I've, I've seen, oh, and I haven't seen Belfast yet either, which I've Belfast, heard is Belfast I loved. I heard is good. Loved Belfast. Excellent movie. So all these things considered, if all those are amazing, I will stand by what I say because there's 10 nominees. And to be honest, the rest of them aren't great. Let and me I'm, see some of I'm used to them being, I'm used to most of them being great. Dune, like, Dune was mind blowing. I didn't, I didn't think so. You are a goofball. I thought it was, so, <laughs> I thought it was like a good, that kind of movie. I, I thought Dune, and I actually think Dune should win because it's the most unique and sort of it was cool. mesmeric movie I've, I've seen in many years. That's fair. I mean, I, I just, I didn't, I, I don't think it was bad. Blew I, just, me like, away. I didn't love it. I thought it was bad. I liked King Richard a lot. I hated King Did Richard. you really? I thought it was terrible. <laughs> and so, I, dude, I got to be honest. I was like, I cannot believe it. And I, again, like, I know how much it hurts to have your work criticized. I have made nothing on par with any of the shit. So like it's ridiculous for me to act like I'm Gene Siskel all of a sudden, but I thought King Richard was like insultingly bad. Is that like because a, of your tennis? Part, that's part of it, pedigree? but it, it felt like a high schooler wrote it. Interesting. And I'm a huge tennis fan, like, and I thought Will Smith was great. Yeah, he nailed it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I really, I really didn't like it. Belfast, I loved. Coda, I loved. Don't look up, I hate it. I hated it too. Hated it. Drive my car. I'm not. I haven't seen it. I'm not interesting enough to watch that. Dune, I loved. King Richard, I liked. Have not seen Licorice Pizza. Haven't seen Nightmare Alley. I've Nightmare Alley's mediocre. I, mean, I love Guillermo del Toro. Has a cool ending, but like not best picture deserving. Yeah, it Power was, of the Dog. We couldn't finish. Power we, of the Dog. Same. I have the same exact feedback. It was beautifully shot. The ending's really good. It's just I still like why. Spoiler alert. Sort of. Not even. Why is Benedict Cumberbatch so mad? It doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. Like the the reason isn't compelling enough to make it just made no sense to me. Interesting. And then we started West Side Story, but we weren't in the mood for Unwatchable. the musical. 
Unwatchable? My, one Didn't of my, you go see it with your dad? I thought my you liked favorite it. soundtrack of all time. One of my favorite movies of all time. I've seen it live twice. I love it. It was unwatchable. Really? I thought so, yeah. Interesting. Every single musical number is not as good as the, in all the right. original. Well, to me, honestly, I, I, and we're going to very much disagree on this, Dune, to me, lifts everything up in this category. To me, it was that interesting and amazing of a movie. Yeah, fair. fair. I've seen it twice. I'm fine with, I'm fine with that. Like and I, it's a movie that I will watch again multiple times in my yeah. life. It was cool. Like, I, and, you know, maybe I didn't pay attention enough in the first 15 minutes to understand what the fuck was going on, but um, it just didn't do it for me. But Got whatever. I'm, I have no issue with agreeing to disagree. I will say this. The best doc category has some heaters in it, and I'd like to make some recommendations to our watchers. Ascension. Amazing movie. What's that? It's just essentially like a modern... It just documents modern life in China from all angles without mm. a VO or a POV. It kind of just lets you decide what you want on it. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Baraka. Nope. It's sort of like that with the world. It's older. Really cool. Recommend that. Uh, Summer of Soul is awesome. We watched that. Did you guys like yeah, it? Yeah, we liked it. It was cool. It's a, you have to be in the mood for it. It's just a musical. Yeah. It's like the full songs from every performer yeah. if basically. you like the woodstock documentary the og one not i'm not talking about the one that i've talked about 700 times like yeah. the original one you'd, you'll love this yeah. attica was slow um but uh flea is really fucking good and too. what's that about flea is about this uh refugee from afghanistan who's also gay telling his st which like I know being in the industry, you hear that and you're like, isn't it annoying to imagine the executive who was licking his chops over that story? Yeah, right. Like that's just, but it's a really, really like touching, crazy Reminds story. Of, um, it's just animated. The kite runner. Yeah. Right. So like, it's not the same, but like they're, it's, it's a guy just telling his friend his story and they animate the whole thing. Hmm. So I think it's nominated for best animated too. So anyway, those are right. And writing with fire doesn't even come out till after the, after the fucking Academy Awards. Like, are you serious? How are you not going to let us watch that? How before? are they not going to let us? That pisses me off a little. Whatever. Sorry. Well, you know, you are a cinephile. What's that? Oh, a what? lover of oh. films. I thought that that means a lover of Asians. Cinephile. What? <laughs> right. Is it? S I N O F I. No, no. C I N E. Oh. <laughs> But Sino, Sinophile, yeah, that's interesting because Sino is China, right? It's China specifically, right? It, either that or Eastern Asian. It, it could be, be China. No, but I think yeah. it's because it right. it's, it's the Sino-Japanese war okay. was China versus Japan. Sinophiles, correct. China? No, movie guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the one? S-I-N-O. Sinophile. Like a being it, a I don't know if that's a word. I'd be surprised if that, is it a word? It's the one that you said, yeah. No, the one that I said. S I N O oh, file is no, a word. Cine. Uh, Someone who loves Chinese people. <laughs> a cinephile is a person who demonstrates a strong interest for Chinese culture, yeah. Chinese language, yeah. Chinese history, or Chinese people. But it's certainly not. Uh, there's, it's not sexual. It's not well. Like if you a, are a cinephile, you should, you'd love ascension. <laughs> so very <check> cool. <laughs> very cool. Well, you were right. I'm, I'm going to give you full credit on that. No, that was a collab. You yeah. you refined the de the definition. <laughs> Francis G collab right there, dude. Imagine if. I I guess it <laughs> sort of made sense because there was a, an Asian documentary in there. Yeah. And I was like, you're a cinephile. You love China. Dude, totally. You know, Works. You love films. Most people do not have such, uh, I would say, nuanced and, and researched uh, opinions about the Academy Awards. It's the only time of the year that I get excited about movies. I like used to really like movies, and I'm starting to feel more and more that it's sort of like, it feels like an antiquated medium, sort of, mm. that's like hanging on for dear life, which I feel sad saying, but like I'm fine with rolling with the times. Well, the big, the big game changer in both regards to both movies and television has been the limited series. Big time. That has become the, the premier, the, the, the sort of leader. It has emerged in that A list actors love doing limited series nicole yeah. kidman does has does that's almost all she does yeah. and it's great it makes sense and uh you know it's, she did uh the one with hugh grant about the murder that we loved oh so good that was so good it was called. she did nine perfect pretty little strangers lies. pretty little lies all and, great. Yeah, yeah and then um and it's because you know instead of a tv show which the goal is to just keep getting it renewed season after season in into you know, however long, uh, they come out and they do eight episodes 
as a character, and then it's over. And it's basically a really long movie. Right. You know who else has really hopped on this train is... Uh, like everybody, sort of. The guy who played Batman. No, but I'm excited to see that. Christian Bale? Oh. Uh, that, uh, the... Michael Keaton? Michael Keaton. Oh, which he one? did Dope Sick. Oh, the drug Sick. one, yeah. He did Dope Sick, but he also did... Um, he did another one, too, I think. Recently, not so long ago. I would have thought. Dude, to, okay, so sorry to interrupt, but to my point, like last year, look at the movies that were nominated. Nomadland, amazing. Sound of Metal, amazing. Minari, amazing. Promising Young Woman, amazing. And then The Father, amazing. And then like even the ones that in my opinion were maybe a step below those were still really good. Child of Chicago 7, really solid. Judas Black Messiah, really solid. Mank is the only sore thumb in that bunch. Boy, you named a bunch that I didn't see. I didn't see Minari. Oh, it's amazing. Really? Is it's that the amazing. one about the sort of, uh, well, there you go. That's your cinephile. No, no, uh, the Korean. You're right. Okay. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> I wonder what the word for someone who loves Korean culture is. Um, yeah. I wonder. There has to be a name K- for that. k pop I think he was in the dropout. Eaton. Oh. Which is the that's, show you're watching. He's in that? That's what, it's, that's what it says here. Interesting. Hmm. Dude, year before. Parasite, 1917, The Joker, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Marriage Story. These are Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, that, dude, that's a loaded year. Loaded. It, I think it, it comes and goes. But that, that was back when movies were still in theaters. It's only two years ago. No, but that was before COVID, was it not? It was, it was right, yeah, right before. Right. But still, dude, I mean, even again. I wonder if the, you know, sort of exodus from movie theaters has impacted uh the drive towards right. or maybe have to shoot it having to shoot them during COVID. yes right has to have impacted it mm-hmm. to some degree there's a scarcity mm-hmm. there's a correction he's not michael keaton is not in no the dropout no i don't know why ryan said that i don't know why either. Uh, okay well that's Forgive the me. the oops academy award preview preview from julio um, Hollerati. <laughs> So we don't want to do any one more email. Please do. We have some heaters, so we should probably just fucking throw these in here because I would like to get to all of them. Um, and we will see. Okay. Here we go. Hello, Oops the Podcast. I love the podcast so much. I've literally listened to every episode from episode one. Love it. My question. I've started seeing someone, and we love to go out and eat good food and drink wine. We've been going out for three weeks. You good? Yeah. Um, I, I love it and am having a ton of, or sorry, I love it and I'm having a ton of fun doing so, but I am paying for everything and I don't mind doing that. But if it keeps going, I will be broke. How long until I can ask to start to split these things? She usually pays for like the wine when we pick it up together. So like, I, obviously she appreciates it, but what should I do next? Should I just stop going to these like nicer places and subliminally do it that way? Or should I bring it up and ask to start splitting things? What do you think? I'm literally your number one fan. I love you. <laughs> um, okay. So, dude, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, I think that, you know, it's, it's a great question as to how do you broach that subject? Right. How do you start to say, uh, would you mind if we started splitting things? Um, I think that, you know, you, he's just, it's it's such a tough thing in dating where if you establish this thing of him paying for stuff, how do you change that? Um, I think he, frankly, he should just be honest. I mean, did he, he says he likes the girl a lot. Yeah, I think so. That's the impression that I'm getting. Yeah. So, and there's something to sort of, you know, shooting your shot at the beginning. Like you literally see every fucking planet earth episodes about this. You, ru- you, you put your feathers as big as possible mm-hmm. and you do the little dance. Mm-hmm. You know, you do, you throw out your biggest shot in, at the beginning and then you sort of graduate into like what that will look like in a more sustainable fashion. But there's also something too that's a little uh, dishonest in a way about a guy who presents himself as being super successful or, you know, having enough money to t- treat her to all these dates and then all of a sudden pulling the rug a little bit and mm-hmm. saying, ah, Actually, I spent everything I had on the first month of us hanging out, <laughs> and now I have nothing. And if you want to keep hanging out, we're going to have to start splitting stuff. 
Do you know what I mean? Yes. I, I, so I have a. I think I have a, a good advice for this. Okay. I think there's a way to go to less expensive places without lowering the quality of the thing. It's like fascinating, you say this. Like you know, it's a pe- if if you're going to fucking you know, Le Bernardin or something. You know, what yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard to like lower the the level if you're like going to those kind of places. But if you're just going to places that are like kind of expensive. You can maybe go to less expensive places. Now, granted, I agree because this hap- like this has happened to me in relationships where like I come out of the gate always paying, right? And eventually it's like, oh, we're both gonna pay. Mm-hmm. Um, but anytime where that has happened, the girl has been the one who yeah, brings that same. up. So same. my honest advice is maybe just try to wear her down. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, I I understand why the hey, listen, could we start splitting things conversation is a little weird. And, and, and like, un, you don't want to have to have it. Yeah. Even though, of course, it seems reasonable. But you, I think that maybe you should buy yourself time to find the best possible way to have that conversation. Do you think that if Instead the guy, go, you know, sets up a dinner and the two of them go out to it and then they split it, that somehow it becomes less of a date? Um, it just de- it, it depends, dude. Like, okay, Hill Dog and I are almost always splitting when we, when we go out, yeah. right? And I don't feel for us that it makes it less of a date. Nor, nor would I. Um, You're still giving your time to this person. It can, it's still a date, you know? So, but, but, you know, we've been together a long time. But, like, I would say pretty quickly we started splitting. Like, I paid probably for a few weeks or maybe a month. Maybe, mm-hmm. I don't even know. But then very, very quickly we started splitting. And there was even time where she'd be like, we can split. And I would decline that offer. And then eventually we just start hanging out every day. So I think it just happened naturally. I think for special occasions, it's really nice to just treat somebody. Totally. Whether it's their birthday or as you know, for you, Valentine's day. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, when you're at a point in a relationship where you, you know, are splitting rent or finances or, you know, what or hanging out all the time, you just have to be realistic with each other because, you know, it, it ceases to be the I'm going to impress. Like, if, let's put it this way. If she becomes fundamentally aware of your actual financial situation and is not okay with that, well, then the relationship should be over. That's true. Right. You know, but- if, if the reality materializes because you are now at a point where you can be honest. And say, I can't afford to take you out to a nice dinner once once a week, every week. Then, you know, and, and that's not okay with her. Well, then what are you doing? I mean, it should be over. That's not somebody you want to date. Right. And this, unless it is. Right. You know? and, and the other thing, too, to consider is, like, how hot you come in. Because, like, if you show up in, like, an uber black and, like, if you put on this whole thing, that is different than, like, right. you go out to a bunch of nice dinners and suddenly, you know, like, I don't know. Right. She can be forgiven for thinking that, yeah. oh, I, it's no problem for him to buy my dinner. He makes a lot more money than me. He's always riding Uber Blacks. Right, right. If you didn't put on this whole facade, if it's just the dinner, mm. then it's, it's, it's not going to end up being that difficult of a thing. That's it. It's not going to end up being that difficult. All right. Well. I think that's all. That's a great sp- spot to jump off the road. And explore what the woods have to offer. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Oops! The Podcast, everyone. By the way, tickets for my Gotham show, New York City, April 8th and 9th, my shows, are going fast. And I don't say that lightly. I check the seat map every single day. Yeah, I'm psyched for that, bro. And there are fewer and fewer seats available. That's going to be sick. Don't miss out if you'd like to see that. I hope to see some of you there. You can get tickets for that at FrancisSells.com. Julio, have you got anything coming up? Yeah, I'm going to be in Seattle on uh, July 28th, the Crocodile Room. Nice. I'd love to see you guys there. Um, I have some other cool stuff coming up soon as well that I, I can't, like, I guess I'm not supposed to say yet, but, like, there, Don't I'll say have it. some more dates uh, on the West Coast as well, and uh, I'm going to keep adding stuff. So. Super fun. That soups the podcast. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon.